Because every day when I look at you, the world begins to turn. I try to warm up to the heat you produce, but all I can do is burn. Hey, that's a little shout out for Megan and Andrew on their one way gauge motorcycle, yeah. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we got a big rascal to tackle tonight. We're going to address a, kind of a chapter that's been our Achilles heel throughout the year, and that chapter is called uh, Rational Expressions. And there were some tough problems to sort out in that chapter. And th these were the five specific topics that were involved in that chapter. And the good news is, is we can check one off the list. We did complex fractions a couple weeks ago, and we really did well with that. We took some big leaps and bounds. So tonight what I want to address is I'm going to tackle the first one, simplifying rational expressions, and there should be a little A in there, a little typo. Um, we're also going to talk about multiplying and dividing, and I think both of those two topics right there are very easy. And then we're going to tackle a big rascal, adding and subtracting, which is slightly more complicated. We're going to tap the brakes and, and kind of go to boot camp on that one. And then I'm going to save number five for the next video and kind of compare and contrast that to number four. So without further ado, let's jump in. So here's an example of simplifying, and, and basically here's the deal. If you feel comfortable with factoring, then you're going to be a rock star at these types of problems. The first thing you'll notice about the trinomial in the numerator up here is that it's kind of backwards, so to speak. And so to perhaps make us a little more comfortable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative 1. And when I factor that negative 1 away, I cannot throw it away because there's not, there wasn't an equation involved. This equal sign wasn't there originally. I'm just using it kind of as to show my next move. But uh, negative 1, that would then be positive x squared plus 7x and then minus 8. So we changed the signs of all three terms. And then on the bottom, we've got our x minus x squared. All right. Now I'm going to keep continue to bring that negative 1 with me. And I'm going to factor that trinomial, thinking of two numbers that add up to 7 and multiply to negative 8. I'm thinking positive 8 and negative 1. Meanwhile, on the bottom, I've got a GCF. Factor out the x. Of course, I'm dividing it. The first term becomes a 1, and the second term becomes an x. Now, as we look for like terms here, that we could cancel. We, we could cancel these two quantities, but notice they're backwards, so we're going to leave a negative 1. And now I'm, I have two negative 1s in my numerator, and if I multiply these bears together, we're going to end up with positive 1. So my final answer is x plus 8 divided by x. It may be tempting to cancel out those x's that you see right here, but uh, because of the 1 on top is part of a binomial, we cannot do so. And in fact, if you want to put parentheses around that quantity and tell yourself it's in jail, that may help visualize the idea of not being able to cancel that x. Again, when we get to multiplying and dividing, if you're strong in factoring and you feel confident there, again, you're going to be a rock star and pretty much breeze through these problems. My, here are my notes. I'm going to say when I do see a division problem uh, like we have here in this one, I'm going to keep, change, and flip. What do I mean by that? I'm going to keep the first fraction the way it is. Uh, I'm going to change my operation here to multiplication while I flip that second fraction. So keep, change, flip. Uh, number two here is we are going to factor everything completely. And that's a challenge in itself. Once we get that done, life is golden. We're going to simplify. We're going to cancel out any like terms from one numerator to another denominator. And then once we get everything simplified, we'll multiply straight across uh, numerators times numerators and denominators times denominators. One of the things I want to get you in the habit of is always looking for that GCF. And again, we cannot throw it away. We've got to maintain and keep that GCF. But in this first numerator here, I got a GCF of 2. So let's pull it out. We got 5x squared plus 21x uh, plus what, that 18. Okay, on the bottom here, I've got another 2 I can pull out, and that leaves me with 3x squared minus x minus 30. Uh, looking for more GCFs here, perhaps. Um, I can pull out an 8, and that's going to leave me with 5x plus 6 right there. And then last but not least, I don't think I've got a GCF in that lower one because the 13 is being prime. But anyway, so we're going to keep this first fraction the same way we see it. We're going to pull down the 2. We're not throwing it away. And then we're going to factor with trial and error. And, and some of us are allergic to that. And I'm going to help you kind of overcome that allergy, hopefully. Well, the good news is 5 is prime, so we know it's 5x times 1x. And then we're going to ignore the 21, but we're going to focus on the 18 and really pull, play with the multiples of 18. Like, do I want 1 times 18, or do I want 2 times 9, or 3 times 6, and where do they go? You know, the location of that makes a really big deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play around a little bit. I'm going to try a plus 3 here. That forces my outer terms to be 15. And then I'm going to throw a plus 6 here. And if I do the 15x plus the 6x on the inside, it checks and gives me that 21. So we know we did well there. On the bottom, again, I got another prime number, so I'm trying to treat you well here, trying to give you, cut you a little break anyway. 
Um, ignore the negative 1 for now and focus on the negative 30. Get some multiples of negative 30. Again, trial and error. Don't feel like you have to get it on your first try. I'm going to try a plus 3 here, which then forces a negative 10 there because they have to multiply to the negative 30. Check your outer. That's positive 9. Inside's negative 10. Add them up, and you do get the negative 1 we had in the middle. We're changing our operation to multiplication, and we got a flip. So I got another prime 3 there, so let's go 3x here times an x there. And again, you kind of you have this sneaky, suspicious feeling that things should cancel. And if you got a 3x minus 10 down here, then perhaps you should at least try 3x minus 10 here and see if it works. That would force this to be a positive 1. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that would be a negative 1, wouldn't it? Because I need a negative times a negative to give me that positive. And, of course, let's see, negative 3, negative 10 does add up to negative 13. Uh, then I already pulled out my 8, leaving me with 5x plus 6. So, if, again, if I'm going too fast, hit the pause button and sort this out again without me going so fast. Uh, let's see, what can we cancel? This bear with that bear. Uh, 5x plus 6 with 5x plus 6. As long as one of the terms is in the numerator and the other is in the denominator, it's a legal cancellation. Last but not least, kill the twos. When the dust settles on this Wild West shootout, we still have a surviving x minus 1 in the numerator and an 8 in the denominator. And ladies and gentlemen, that is our final answer. Well, we tried to fly through those first two topics. Now we're going to tap the brakes. And I really want to dive into the adding and subtracting. And it's kind of like, you know, if you ever had a broken arm, uh, would you want your doctor to put a band-aid on it and call you good enough? No, you, you, you got to put that sucker in a cast. You got to take care of it the right way. Similarly speaking here today, we have a broken arm uh, with respect to this particular topic, and I don't want to just put a band-aid on it. We got to dig in and we got to give it the proper treatment, and so we're going to tap the brakes here. First question that becomes um, a real factor is what, whether we're going to keep or kill the fractions we see. And the answer to these problems is we're going to keep them. Why are we keeping them? Because there's no equal sign in these problems. We're not solving an equation. Okay, what we're doing is, and here's the big picture. What's the big picture? They're asking me to take two fractions and combine them, either by addition or subtraction, into one fraction. Key there being is you're going to end up with a fraction when you're done, just combining two fractions into one fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to... Um, fifth grade here, and I know that sounds foolish, but I'm telling you what, if we can handle these fifth grade problems, conceptually we're going to be in great shape. So can we subtract these? Yes, they're common denominators. How do you subtract them? Well, you subtract the numerators, of course, but what do you do with the denominators? That's a question I get all the time, all the time. It's still going to be an 8. It's still going to be an 8, and of course you could reduce that to 1 fourth. So when you're adding or subtracting, once you create common denominators, that denominator travels with you all the way to the finish line. Now, example number two, what if I gave you three-eighths, but then I wanted you to subtract one-fourth? What would you really do? Focus on the pure concept here. What you would do is you would multiply the second one by two over two, which is really, that's a value of one in disguise. That's the key. We're multiplying by one in disguise. What that does is we've got three-eighths minus two-eighths. Now you've got your common denominators. We could subtract. Denominator travels with you, and you get one-eighth, Okay. All right, one more problem. What if I gave you 3 eighths and I wanted you to subtract 1 fifth? Okay, how are we going to get our common denominator? What I'm going to do is I need to multiply by 5 over 5. What is that? That's a 1 in disguise. Over here, I'm going to multiply by 8 over 8. What is that? That's a 1 in disguise. You have to multiply by 1. So I'll clean this bear up a little bit. See, the first fraction becomes 15 fortieths. Minus the second fraction is 8 fortieths. Subtract those rascals, and we got 7 fortieths. Denominator travels with me, and that's reduced as much as possible. Honest to goodness, if we understand those three problems in their most simplistic form, then conceptually we're going to be in great shape, and we've built a solid foundation from which we can now build upon. Well, we're breaking out the easy one here first, and you can hoot and holler because I gave you such a nice one, but the good news is, is we've already got common denominators, okay? So we can go ahead and subtract. Now, what I like to do is I like to change the operation to addition while distributing the negative through the problem. So that's, I want to emphasize that. Anytime we get a subtraction problem, we're going to instantly change it to addition and distribute the negative through that second numerator. Once we do that, we can combine those numerators. The x's cancel, and I believe we end up with a positive 5 all over. Remember, that common denominator travels with us without changing, okay? And then that answer is, in simplest form, we are done. A uh, very innocent-looking problem here, but the bad news is, is we do not have common denominators. I need to keep the diffractions. I'm not going to kill them. 
And I need to try to create that common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the first one by D over D. What is that? That's a 1 in disguise. Multiply the second one by B over B. What is that? That's a 1 in disguise. All right, clean up the first one, DA over DB. Clean up the second one, I've got CB all over DB. Do we have common denominators? Yes, we do. Combine the numerators. All right, denominator travels with me. Can we cancel anything? Can we kill anything? Absolutely not. That's my final answer. Okay, here's what we got cooking here. I need uh, my LCD, so to speak. Uh, when I'm all done, I need my common denominator is going to be x and the quantity x plus 6. In order to generate that kind of denominator, I'm going to multiply the first one by x over x. What is that? That's a 1 in disguise. Meanwhile, I'm going to multiply the second one by the quantity x plus 6 over x plus 6. The other thing I want you to do, and I wish I had done this 10 seconds ago before I even worried about the common denominator, we're going to change this operation to addition while distributing a negative through the numerator. All right, uh, let's see, this first fraction turns into x squared plus x all over x quantity x plus 6. Notice I didn't distribute it in the denominator, that's unnecessary. Uh, my numerator up here is going to be negative 3x minus 18 and x quantity x plus 6. Now we've created those common denominators, we can combine the fractions. Combining like terms, I've got x squared minus 2x minus 18. We could think about factoring it, but unfortunately I don't think this is a factorable one. And that's kind of a good thing because it means we're done, we've got no further work to do. There's our final answer. Uh, this problem brings up an interesting question, and the, and the argument becomes, um, if you have the opportunity to reduce or simplify um, an individual fraction at the beginning, I encourage you to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, it's going to save you a lot of work down the road. And so what you'll notice here, this first fraction, you may be tempted to cancel the fives, but that's illegal because this one on the bottom is in jail. However... The second fraction, we can factor out a 2, that would leave us with n plus 3, and then what happens, that 2 can kill the 4, making this 2n on top. So, meanwhile, we're going to change our operation to addition, distributing the negative through that second numerator. Now, what are we going to do? What's my LCD? What's my common denominator going to be? I think it's going to be the quantity n plus 5 and the quantity n plus 3. In order to generate that denominator, I'm going to have to multiply the first one by n plus 3 all over n plus 3. And the second one, I'm going to multiply by n plus 5 over n plus 5. What is that essentially? Believe it or not, it's a 1 in disguise, just like all the other ones were. It just looks a little feistier and uglier. If I clean up the left side, I'm going to get 5n plus 15. Don't worry about uh, foiling the bottom here. Just always leave it in factored form in case something uh, cancels later on. Uh, across the top here, I'm going to distribute a negative 2n. That's going to give me negative 2n squared minus 10n. And on the bottom, we've got our n plus 3 and our n plus 5. So things are looking good. We've got our common denominators. We're going to combine like terms in the numerators and put them in the correct order. Let's see. I'm thinking I'm going to get minus 5n plus 15. Don't think it's factorable. And so I'm just going to leave it like this. Notice when I'm all said and done and I dis, you know, proclaim this to be my final answer, I have a fraction. All we're doing is taking two fractions up here, we're combining them into one fraction down here. That's it. That's why we're keeping the fraction. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you feel more confident with adding and subtracting rational expressions, and I will see you tomorrow.